Hey guys, Dwayne England with FHN back here in the Bait Lab and we are continuing with our process of smoking this delicious coho or silver salmon. Uh, yesterday we covered some of the basics of mixing a brine, what the ratios were, and of course uh, how to prepare uh, this, this fish or how to get it to this size and, and all the bones out and that's all covered in previous videos so I want you to go back and check those out. But we're going to move forward with the next step and basically this sat in that dry brine for 14 hours. That allows all the water and the moisture to be extracted out and you can see that the bowls are basically full of water. All that water came out of the meat. There was no water added to the fish at all. This is what the salts and sugars do. They draw the moisture out and that's what you need to do to obtain uh, a fish that is ready for smoking. So. This meat now uh, has a real nice texture to it. It's tacky, it's, uh, it's, it looks kind of uh, tough, but it's not. It's just, it's got this tackiness to it to where it's basically cured, okay? Uh, some would say it has a nice glaze to it. That's the sugars that, that do that. But this tackiness is key. Once we achieve our 14 hours in that brine, we have to rinse it. And we give that uh, fish each piece out of, the, out of your tubs, a thorough rinse under the sink, and wash, wash all the salts and sugars off the surface. If you don't do that, you're going to have a fish that smokes up just fine, but it's gonna be a little salty to the palate. Now, some folks may like that extra salt. Uh, I find that most people do not. So take some time, take it out one piece at a time, rinse it off thoroughly, and uh, put it on a pan. Then, you need to move it into your drying area. And that's what we did here last night. We brought it back here in the bait lab on our table, and. Uh, basically spread it out. Uh, my my uh, studio here is about oh, 62 degrees or so, which is ideal, and it allows the excess moisture to basically evaporate off of the, off of the surface, and you get this really nice caramelized looking uh, fish that is, is uh, ready for smoking. So a, a lot of the excess moisture has been drawn out. We've allowed it to air dry, and we got a few other things we want to do. A little, uh, little pointer, one thing you'll see me over the course of time use a lot of are puppy pee pads, believe it or not. These puppy pads are phenomenal for doing things like this, setting uh, fish and game on, utilizing to cover counter space that you don't want to get all messed up. Uh, we'll use it repeatedly here in the bait lab when we're carrying all different types of bait. Uh, something to think about if you haven't utilized these and you burn through a ton of paper towels, get some puppy pads, they're going to save you a ton of money on your paper towel. So, uh, with that, the, the, uh, the next step that I like to do in prepping this for smoking. Now, keep in mind I got the smokers outside. We're using two of them today. The temperature outside is about 15 degrees warmer than it was yesterday, so that's actually kind of a benefit. It doesn't take as long to get the smokers up to temperature. Easier to maintain that 120 degrees that I'm shooting for. So we'll, we'll play around with that. We're using the insulated uh, smoker and I'm using the, uh, the Little Chief with the, uh, with the insulation box if I need to to bring that temperature up and hold it at 120. So 120 is the key and that's what we're going to focus on on both smokers today. Uh, one thing we can do now is uh, because this fish is nice and tacky, I like to add a little extra seasoning back to it. You wash a lot of the stuff off of the surface and for me, I am kind of a pepper guy. I like to add a little extra coarse ground pepper. So we're going to just simply take some of this and sprinkle a little of this on here, okay? Give us a little bit of extra pepper on some of this. Now, I don't make it all exactly the same. People have different, uh, different flavors that they enjoy. So I, add, I definitely add some pepper, and we'll do that. Looks like a lot, but actually the amount that's landing on the fish is not excessive. So. Little ground pepper on there, never hurt anybody. We're just going to add a little bit of this here. These tuna bellies, tuna bellies, these coho bellies, coho bellies are going to be amazing. They have so much oil in them and so much nutritional value. Um, talk about getting your, your good fats that you need. Definitely hang on to your bellies no matter what type of fish you're smoking. The other one I like to do is old Tony's uh, Creole mix here. This stuff is fantastic. I'm gonna put it on all this because I'm gonna share this with some people that may not care for extra spiciness, but I definitely like to put a little bit of this on your smoked fish. If you've never done this, this is a, a must. Um, this adds so much amazing flavor. And whether you're smoking it or cooking fish on the grill, I would recommend using Tony's. 
um, just because it adds so much flavor to your fish. And I'm going to do about half of these just to give it a little bit of extra. Okay. So there we go. Now, basically, like I said, using two smokers today, I'm going to put the, uh, these bigger portions, these belly portions on my rack. Now remember my, my little chief is a top loader. So I simply need to set these on here and then we'll be dropping that in the smoker. Okay. So this is going to be for the little chief and the other fish are going to simply go on these racks. I'll stack these in and uh, we'll load these up and put them in the other smoker. And I'm not going to bore you with lining up each piece, but the key here as you load your smoking racks, notice when I spread these out yesterday, I have them separated in similar size. So the thickness or the thinness of these pieces are all very similar. That way when these thinner pieces are getting close to being completely smoked, I can remove this entire rack out of my smoker and leave the thicker pieces in to finish up. Uh, I find that's the best way to do that. So take a little time. Uh, once you've rinsed your fish and you're going to lay it out for your air drying, I basically pick and sort and align those so that your thicker pieces are together and your, your thinner pieces are together. And then when you put them on your racks, it's very easy to keep all those, those same similar size pieces uh, together and then it's simply putting the rack in and again once that gets finished up sooner than your thicker pieces you can pull that out and not over smoke or over dry. So I'm going to finish uh, loading these racks and we're going to take them outside and put them in the smoker.